Oh, hey there. Did anybody else notice the temperature drop 40 degrees whenever you walked inside an air-conditioned building today? Well, I did. Nevertheless, speaking of things that are not quite as hot as hell, I want to tell you a quick story. So I'm reading in Daniel right now, and uh, it's a wonderful book, obviously. And it starts off, and Daniel uh, is captured uh, into captivity in Babylon, okay? And when this happens, then they're like, hey, we need to have some... Uh, smart, better young people, and we're going to raise them up to be leaders in Babylon because we want to um, integrate them into our society and our, us into their society. Okay, and so they're like, you're going to be given a portion from the king's table. You're going to have the king's meat and the king's wine every day. And Daniel's like, I am choosing to not defile my body by eating that stuff. And the guy in charge of him is like, man, look, I, I don't care what you eat, okay, but if, if you look all sickly, I'm going to get in trouble. And the king's going to have my head. And Daniel goes, let me tell you what. Do a test and let me eat vegetables, uh, fruits and vegetables, for the next 10 days and drink water. And everybody else can do what they're doing. And just see if I'm still healthy at the end of 10 days. And so at the end of 10 days, he was healthier than the other people. And the guy's like, you know what? I'm going to let it slide. You eat whatever you want. I don't care. So then some time passes. King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream, okay? And in this dream, he is very distraught. And so he goes to all the magi of the land, all the magicians, sorcerers, and what have you, and he says, I want you to interpret this dream. And they're like, absolutely. And they're like, just tell us the dream. And he goes, oh, no, no. If you're the real thing, you tell me my dream. You tell me what I dreamt, and then you interpret it for me. And they're like, sir, nobody can do that. And he's like, right, because you're all a bunch of liars. So I'll tell you what, if you can't do that, I'm going to kill all of you because you're all a bunch of liars and I'm over it. And they're like, oh, panic, 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 panic. And somebody's like, hey, you know, Daniel might be able to interpret this dream. And so he has Daniel brought in there. And Daniel says, you know, um, yeah, tell me the dream and I'll interpret it. And he goes, no, no, same rules go for you. You figure out the dream. If, you, if, you got, if you're in touch with God or the gods or whatever, then you tell me what I dreamt. And so Daniel's like, let me pray. And he goes back and he prays about it and God reveals the dream to him. And he tells Nebuchadnezzar, this is your dream. And he's like, ooh, you're a smart dude. So he elevates him up to a higher level. At which point uh, he says, hey, can you bring my friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? And King Nebuchadnezzar is like, yeah, whatever, bring them along too. So they all get high up seats in the land. Now. Some time passes, and King Nebuchadnezzar gets a pretty big head. This is not a secret. He makes a huge golden image of himself that's, I don't know, 90 feet tall and whatever. And he gets everybody in the land. He says, tell you what, here's what's going to happen. Whenever the music plays, then you're all going to bow down to this statue of myself because I'm pretty awesome. And so everybody does because they're like, or, and he says, if you don't, I will throw you into a blazing furnace. And so they're like, uh oh, I don't want to die. We don't care about this. It's not real anyway. Music plays, everybody drops down except for three guys Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they stand up, and the king's like, um, come here, you guys. I like you. Just bow down. It's not that big of a deal. I don't care if you mean it or not. And they're like, sir, we won't. We won't do that. And he goes, just do it. Just bat it. Like, I don't care. I don't care if you mean it. I just, you know, like it's setting a bad example for everybody else. And they're like, let me tell you what. We're not going to bow down to the image that you presented because we only worship the true God. And this means something to us. And it means something to him. And we're going to honor him with this. And our God can save us from this situation. But even if he doesn't know this, O king, we will not bow down to your image. And he's like, ooh, I'm so angry right now. And so he makes this fire seven times hotter than it was. And he has some guys tie them up and throw them into the fire. And he's so urgent, so mad that when they're getting thrown into the fire, then the guys throwing them into the fire, they die. And they're tough dudes. Anyway, after a minute, the Nebuchadnezzar's like, and he goes, Weren't the, didn't we throw three guys in there? And they're like, yes, sir. And he goes, there's four guys in there. And one of them looks like a son of God. And so he gets to the entrance as close as he can get. It's like, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come on out. Sorry. At which point he says, nobody better say anything bad about their God because their God is real and no God can deliver like this God can deliver. I've never seen anything like this in my life. So 
anybody says anything bad about the God of Shadrach, Meshach, or Abednego, which is God, then I will have them cut into pieces and I will have their houses turned into rubble. And they're like, oh, watch out. But then after this, okay, Nebuchadnezzar has another dream. And in this dream, he's very, very distraught. He gets Daniel. He's like, ah, you helped me before, man. Tell me what's going on here. What, what's this dream about? And Daniel's like, I don't want to say, man. And he goes, just tell me the dream. What's the matter? What's the problem? And he goes, look, if it was about your enemies, I wouldn't have a problem telling you, but I think you're going to be mad at me. He goes, just tell me the dream already. And he goes, all right, so here's the thing. Because of your pride, you are going to be cut down. You are a, a huge, mighty king. You're the golden head of the, basically all the societies that are going to come after you. You're the best. We know that. But you've tried to elevate yourself above God. And because of that, he's going to humble you. And he's going to make you eat grass of the field and walk on all fours. You're going to have, you're going to have claws like a, like a bird. And you're going to have feathers on your back because you're going to be like a beast of the field. He's going to humble you. And Nebuchadnezzar's like, I'm sorry, what? And he goes, yeah, but look, man, I like you. So repent, humble yourself, and then this won't happen to you. Maybe God will have mercy on you. And he's like, hmm, I don't know about all this. Keep in mind, this is the guy that watched three people go into a fire and didn't get burned at all. Their clothes weren't bur burned or singed. The, the hairs on their head weren't singed. They didn't even have the smell of fire on them. And he's like, I don't know if this is the real God or not. I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know, mm -mm, no. So a full year passes for him to have time to repent. And I'm sure that at some point in that year, Daniel's like, hey, man, like, you're kind of doing some prideful things. Maybe back it off a touch. Maybe repent. But he doesn't. So he's up on top of his palace, and he's looking down at his kingdom at Babylon. And he says out loud, look at this kingdom that I have built for my own glory with my own hand. And while the words were in his mouth, judgment came down upon him and said, you have been cut off. You will go and eat grass like the, of the field for seven years. You will be like a beast of the field. And then he did. He was cast out and he went mad. He had claws like, uh, like a bird, it says. He said the dew of the land fell upon him so much that he grew feathers in his back. The hair on his back grew like feathers. He ate grass like a like a beast of the field and this lasted for seven years until finally he humbled himself after seven years this is a rock bottom right i see people hit the rock bottom all the time i'm like how much more do you need how many more chances do you have to have before you just finally humble yourself before god nevertheless he finally did after seven years and he's like i am not god and the god of heaven is and I humble myself and I submit myself to him and I was wrong. At which point, you know what happens? Which is normally what happens when we humble, humble ourselves before God. You know what happened? God restored his sanity to him. He stood up like a man again. He lost all the weird stuff. And the people from his kingdom came and searched him out and he came back and ruled his kingdom for the rest of his life. But he had to humble himself first. What is it gonna take? For you to look to God and just go, you know what, you win. You're bigger than me. I submit to you. I mean, how much do you need?